book of Song of Solomon, chapter number 1. Before we begin our reading, any time I ever preach out of this book, I like to always preface it. There are some Baptist preachers that want to quote-unquote spiritualize this book and state that it is a metaphor of Jesus and his bride. Can I say that the writer of Hebrews tells us that the Old Testament was written for our ensamples. And there are pictures and types in this book that you can associate with the Lord Jesus and associate with his bride, the church. But never lose sight of the fact that the Song of Solomon is a love story between Solomon and a Shunammite maid. It's a literal story. In the book of the Song of Solomon, or as some of the old writers called it, the Song of Psalms, the Song of Songs, because of verse number one here. But this book is is a difficult book if you're just going to read it for devotional, because you've got to pay real close attention. Because in one verse, the bridegroom is speaking, and then in the midst of that verse or the next verse, maybe the bride is speaking. So you've got to pay close attention who's talking and what they're talking about. So with all that said, chapter 1, verse number 1 says, The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, Let him kiss me, this is the bride speaking, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth, Therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon... Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for the fellowship of thy people. But Lord, we thank you most of all for grace. Lord, if it had not been for grace, we'd all be lost. We'd all be either in hell or on our way there. But we're thankful for the good grace of God. God, we are thankful, Lord, that you're a God who loves everybody. Lord, not just the noble, not just the famous, not just the, uh, uh, the wealthy, but God, you love even paupers, even wretches like me. And fathers, we come to you this morning, we bless your holy name. Now, Father, we stand in a place where no man can stand alone. And God, without your help, I will not avail anything, for without you, I can do nothing. Lord, I realize that I do not have an intellect strong enough uh, uh, to be able to help someone. Lord, I realize that I do not have the vocabulary strong enough to help someone. Lord, I realize that the best that I can do is fail. But Lord, I realize that nothing is impossible with thee. And that God, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Lord, we know that, God, uh, you desire for folks to worship thee. That's why you sent, sent your son to die on the cross, uh, that, God, we might become sons and daughters of God, uh, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, we know that uh, the, the sorry, no good devil and the powers and imps of hell would like nothing better uh, for us to leave defeated, for us to leave worse than we came in. Uh, so, Father, I pray you'd bind those forces. Uh, I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. Uh, and, God, we plead and seek that, God, you'd show up in a mighty way. Uh, 
Lord, we know you'll honor your word. Uh, you promised that it'll never return void. Uh, but Father, we sure would love to see some fruit from thy word. Uh, Father, if there's anyone amongst us today unsaved, lost without God, uh, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for the saints of God. Uh, Lord, no doubt they've been beat upon by waves of adversity. Uh, Father, they faced opposition. Uh, Father, they have had to deal with a population that is fearful uh, over a virus. Uh, they've had to deal with civil uh, 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 disobedience. They've had to deal with all kinds of things, but they have found themselves in the house of God today. Uh, and Father, I pray you'd refresh them. Uh, I pray you'd revive them. Uh, I pray you'd do something supernatural in our midst today uh, that folks would stand in awe and say, the Lord, he is God. Uh, the Lord, he is God. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, Father, bless your own name and Father help your people and we'll bless and praise you for it for it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things amen amen I want to draw your attention to several things as a way of introduction and we'll get to the message I want you to notice first of all the affection sought in verse number two the maid is saying let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, uh, for thy love is better than wine. Uh, can I say, uh, there is nothing better uh, than a token of affection from someone that you love uh, and love deeply. Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, what a blessing uh, to have a darling wife for 31 years. Uh, what a blessing uh, uh, that when she still holds my hand, uh, Brother James, uh, there's fireworks that goes off in my soul. Uh, and when she kisses me uh, and lets me know she's still mine and I'm hers, uh, that's a blessing. Uh, uh, that's something that a lot of folks uh, uh, are seeking but never come to know. Uh, but I'm thankful. Uh, there's a love far beyond uh, uh, what we have in human interaction. Uh, there's a love from God Himself. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, that He gave His only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, for God is love. Uh, and we love Him because He first loves us. Uh, and if Solomon is a picture of Christ uh, and the bride is seeking kisses from him uh, uh, can I say uh, when Christ kisses us uh, he kisses us in a, in a supernatural spiritual way uh, he kisses us uh, uh, from the, the word of God uh, and there's nothing more sweet uh, than when God will come uh, and blow by your way uh, and give you a verse from glory uh, that sends uh, 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 tingling down your spine uh, goosebumps on your arms uh, to think the God of glory loves me like that that's a blessing uh, we see the affection sought can I say what everybody really wants in this world is to be accepted and loved can I help you with something you are in Jesus he loves you he loves you because He made you and He wants to have a relationship with you. And there's nothing like it when God sends kisses from glory to you. Can I say the affection sought? But notice also the aroma's savor. Look in verse number 3. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Can I say there's nothing like the fragrances of God. We could call them the fruit of the Spirit. The goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, uh, those things are precious and sweet. Uh, and when those things are poured upon us uh, and we start pouring them out to the community, uh, His name uh, is glorified. Uh, and my dear friends, that is what we are to do. Glorify the name of the Lord. I want you to notice, if you will, the awaiting to be summoned. Look in verse number 4. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. Amen. Can I say, Jesus said, No man cometh unto the Father except he be drawn. There's something about the wooing of the Holy Ghost. And can I say, he woos, Brother Ray, lost people to himself to get saved. 
but he woos his children uh, uh, to come and get under his wings. Uh, he woos us to safety. He woos us uh, uh, from our storms and everything to let us know it'll be all right. Uh, there's something about when God draws us, mm, and he draws us close to himself. I'm thankful for the working of the Holy Spirit of God in my life. Is he working in your life? I want you to notice apparent, the appearances stain. Verse number 5, she says, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kadar, as the curtains of Solomon. Now, this is why you do not want to take the Word of God out of context. The reason we have 300 different religions and denominations in America today is because there are many of them that have built their whole stance on one verse taken out of context. If you read that verse by itself, you would think that her skin, she's an African American. She is from Ethiopia. That she is black. Is that not what it says? I am black, but comely. It says my skin is darkened, but I'm good to look upon, is what she's saying. This is why you need to keep reading before you build any doctrine. And it's also why I say the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Look what she says in verse number 6. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. Now can I say the stain of her appearance is because she had worked in the sun. Now in Solomon's day... It was not considered a beautiful thing for a lady to have been sunburnt or suntanned. Now, in our day, that's a whole different story. I'm not going there. <laughs> Y'all spent a lot of money going to them tanning beds and getting all that tanning lotion and laying out like sand lizards on the beach. I understand all that. You think it makes you look better. But in Solomon's day, mm, the less sun, the more beautiful you was looked upon. Because here's why. If you had sun, that meant you worked outside the home. That meant that you had to labor in a field because the only place to work was in the fields. Which meant that nobody really cared for you or took care of you. You were looked down upon. She said, I'm black but comely. She said, the sun had looked upon me. We see appearances stained, but notice the adverse situation. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. Verse number 6, she goes on to say, My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. That's why she's darkened by the sun. She's out working in vineyards. Now, I've never worked in a vineyard. I've worked in a garden, and that was enough. The vineyards, you've got to keep them vines up off the ground. You've got to make sure them grapes are protected. You've got to you know, pull them grapes off when they're right. And do all that. That's a lot of work because there's a lot of grapes on them little bitty vines. And it said that, her mother's children, plural, were angry with me. They made me keep her of the vineyards, plural. She just didn't work one vineyard. She worked several vineyards. But notice the adverse situation. She said, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Now, years ago, I preached on a message on keeping your vineyards. I'm not going to revisit that today. But let me just ask you this. Have you been so busy taking care of everything else in life, you haven't taken care of your own self? Did you come ready to worship today? Have you been so busy with everything going on that you have not had the time to set aside to spend with God so you could come in and hear from Him? See, that's one tool of the devil. And in this day and age where life is so big and moving so fast and they're just so involved, you can get involved in everything and not take time for Jesus. I ought to camp there, but I'm not. Notice her asking for her status. In verse 7, she's directing Solomon. She says, Tell me, O thou, whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? She wanted to know where he dwelt. Because she wanted to get where he was. She didn't want to hang out with anyone else. She wanted to be where he was. But see, when she said that he drew her and that she got to stay in the king's chambers, 
In those days, you did not approach the king unless the king summonsed you, unless he asked for you. And here she's wanting to know what her status is with the king because he's Solomon. Matter of fact, if you study Solomon, this guy was crazy. He had 300 wives and 700 concubines. That's a thousand women that dude dealt, dealt with. Huh? But they didn't get to the king unless he summoned them. Can you imagine living in a house with a thousand women? No wonder he lost his mind in his latter days, huh? And I'm leaving that all alone, huh? huh? Heaven help the one that ever has to deal with my daughter and live with her. That's enough. There's a hurricane right there. But anyway, Christian's going, yep. Now think about it. She's asking for her status. Where do I stand with you? Have you done that with the Lord? Lord, where do I stand with you? I don't want to be busy somewhere else and not where you are. I want to be on the same page with you. I want to be walking with you. I want to be dwelling with you. She's asking for her status. Now notice the answer sent in verse number 8. If thou... Know not, O thou fairest among women. Go thy way forth by thy footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tents. Solomon said, if you don't know where I'm at, then you can just go on your own way. He's saying, if you don't mean that much to me that you don't know where I dwell, you've got a real problem. Just go ahead and feed with the other shepherds. Hmm. Well, that's pretty sobering. Yeah. Amen. That's pretty strong. And I wonder how many times we say, Lord, I sure would like to meet with you. And he says, well, if you don't know where I'm at. Hmm? Maybe you really don't deserve to meet with me. But I'm interested in verse number 8 where he says, If thou know not. Now, I'm going to preach for just a few minutes this morning on this thought. Do you know? Do you know? You see, we live in a day and age where people have a lot of information not necessarily based on truth. And you don't know what to believe. And you don't know who to believe. And you don't know where you stand. But when it comes to the things of God, we have truth and absolute truth. And God gave us the truth so we could know. Do you know? Can I say, first of all, do you know the person of Christ? I didn't ask you if you knew about Him. I didn't ask you if you knew uh, 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 some Bible verses or if you knew what time church started. Do you know the person of Christ? So a preacher, I'm here at church, doesn't that mean so? Do you know the person of Christ? Preacher, I've been baptized. Do you know the person of Christ? Can I say, uh, the devils do. The Bible says in Mark 1, uh, verse 23, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, let us alone. He said, we have, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Uh, art thou come to destroy us? Uh, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Uh, uh, the devils know who he is. Uh, 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 in Acts 19.15, uh, the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, uh, but who are ye? Uh, uh, do you know the person of Christ? Uh, uh, listen, the devils know him. Uh, do you know him? Uh, uh, the Bible Bible says this, uh, uh, do you know him as your Savior? Uh, uh, that's the important thing. They know him as uh, the Lord of glory. They know him as the Holy One of God. They do not know him as Savior. Uh, but you and I uh, have the privilege, uh, as small as we are, uh, to know him uh, as Lord and Savior. Uh, uh, the Bible says this in John 10, 14, uh, I am the good shepherd uh, and know my sheep uh, and am known of mine. Do 
you know him? Uh, uh, 1 John 2 says this in verse 3, uh, and hereby do we know uh, that we know him uh, if we keep his commandments. Uh, he that saith I know him uh, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar uh, and the truth is not in him. Uh, but whosoever keepeth his word uh, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Uh, hereby know we that we are in him. Do you know him? Uh, have you kept his commandments? Uh, have you believed on the Lord? Uh, have you repented? Uh, 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 have you uh, uh, put your faith and trust in him? Uh, uh, the Bible says in John 3 uh, uh, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh, except a man be born again, uh, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus was saying that to one of the most religious men of his day. Uh, a man that had the first five books of the Bible committed to memory. Uh, a man who you could not touch his life. Uh, uh, Jesus said all of that is worthless uh, unless you get born again. Uh, do you know him? Uh, uh, the Bible says in Romans 3.23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, everybody in this building was conceived in sin. Uh, you were born in sin. Uh, uh, you were a sinner by practice, a sinner by nature. Uh, and if you're saved by the good grace of God, you still sin and fail the grace of God every day. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Romans 5, uh, wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin uh, and so death passed upon all men uh, for that all have sinned uh, uh, the reason we go to funerals uh, is because man sinned uh, sin came to this world and when sin came death came with it uh, 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 listen uh, uh, you're going to die friend what matters is what you do with Jesus in this life uh, do you know him uh, uh, the Bible says in Romans 5 8 but God God commended his love toward us uh, in that while we, we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, hey, we were sinful. Uh, we couldn't get to God. Uh, but God looked at us in our sinful state and loved us anyway. Uh, and he made a way. He sent his son to die for our sins. Uh, uh, Romans 5, uh, 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 eight, uh, uh, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our our Lord. Uh, hey, uh, sin brought death. Uh, you got a death sentence. You're headed uh, uh, to eternity. Uh, but my friends, uh, uh, you have eternal life available through Jesus Christ our Lord. Will you uh, and do you know Him? Uh, Romans chapter number 10 says, But what saith it, the Lord is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Uh, that is the word of faith which we preach, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, uh, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, it didn't say believe in your head and confess with your mouth. You've got to believe in your heart. How do you believe in your heart? You've got to repent, turn from the way you're going, and turn to him by faith and ask him to save you. The Bible goes on to say, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If it's in your heart, it'll come out your mouth. The Bible says, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. If you're saved, you're not ashamed. Let folks know about it. Do you know him? Huh? The Bible says, For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Can I help you something? All lives matter. Jesus died for the white, the black, the yellow, the uh, green, the pink, the blue, whatever color they are, Jesus died for them. He's no respecter of persons. He loves everybody the same. And can I say, it takes what he did to save everybody. And you won't go to heaven because you're a Baptist, you'll go to heaven because your sins have been washed in the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in that song Brother James sings that he wrote, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him as Savior? Second Corinthians 13, 5 says, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Do you know him as Savior? Do you know do you know him as Savior? Can I ask you this? Do you know the person of Christ? Do you know the sound of his voice? Mm. I've said that in times gone by, and people say, well, I can't hear him. 
I'm not talking about an audible sound of his voice. But I do know his voice. I know when he speaks to me. John chapter 10, verse number 4, the Bible says, And when he putteth forth his, sheep, his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I've always worried, Brother James, about folks that'll come, they sit here and say, Boy, I love Jesus, and then they'll hear some false preacher or something, but boy, that's a good preacher. If he's not preaching truth, he may have ability, but he's not a good preacher. He's a false preacher. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and they follow me. Hmm. Often wonder about folks when they get upset at church or at the preacher. But Mike, I've never had one ever say, well, I'm leaving because the truth's being preached. You've been here about 20 years now, huh? Yeah, close to it. Yeah, long time. We've been down the road. Hmm? How many times have you heard me say, we can find fault in anybody or anything? You know who you won't find fault in? Jesus. Amen. And Brother Peter, I've found when people find fault, it's because they're not listening to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. Hmm? Do you know do you know him as Savior? Do you know the sound of his voice? Do you know when he speaks? See, so the problem isn't that he speaketh. The problem says in the last days there will be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. They don't know him, Big Doug. They're going with movements. They're going with things that make them feel good. They're going with ear tickling. Can I say... Following his voice won't make you very popular. But it'll make you secure. Do you know the person of Christ? Do you know him as Savior? Do you know the sound of, the, of his voice? Let me ask you this. Do you know the sense of his touch? Well, I'm glad he touched me one day. Hmm? Huh? There wasn't a mighty arm came down from heaven and put his hand on me, but oh, he put his hand on me. Huh? I like that old song, he touched me, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Matthew 8 says this, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Huh? Do you know his touch? Well, sometimes, Brother Ryan, I just spiritually get to crawl on his laps, and he puts his arms around me. And you know what? There ain't enough COVID 19s, 20s, and 25s, or 85s, or anything that can make me fear when his hand's upon me. Let me ask you do you know? Do you know the person of Christ? Let me ask you secondly, do you know the purpose of Christianity? Say, preacher, I know him. Wonderful. Are you doing what he wants you to do? Do you know why he saved you? Can I, can I fill you in? It's not so you can come to church and sing and shout and have a good time at church. Oh, it's right to come to church. But that's not why he saved you. Hmm? He's got legions of angels that worships him and a lot do a lot better job than we do. Sure. It wasn't so we can come and congregate. Do you know the purpose of Christianity? Well, let me give you some verses. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Acts 1 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Genea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. In 2 Corinthians 5 11, Paul said this, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. 
Do you know the purpose of Christianity? It's to win sinners to Jesus. It's to make converts and disciples out of them so that they too can go and tell others about Jesus and win people to Jesus. The purpose of Christianity is why Jesus came in the first place. He came seeking to save that which was lost. Do you know the purpose of Christianity? Now let me ask you this. What are you doing for Christianity? Or even more importantly for Christ? When was the last time you handed out a tract? When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you did anything to impact anybody for the cause of Christ? You say, well, I give my money. But what a blessing. But what have you done? So well, I let my light so shine so they can see Jesus in me because I don't cuss and I dress right and I, I live a clean life. That's a blessing. That's what the Bible commands. Amen. But have you told them? Have you shared the gospel with anybody? We've got a myriad of tracks out there for every flavor of whoever you work around or, or live around. Or something. Have you given out one to anybody? Amen. Do you know Jesus saved you to worship Him in spirit and truth and go and tell others. Amen. The purpose of Christianity is for us to bring sons unto glory. Yep. If we all won one, we'd be well overdoing our building program. Amen. Do you know? Do you know the purpose of Christ? Purpose of Christianity? Do you know the person of Christ? Can I ask you this? Do you know the power of the commandments? So many preachers are so stressed out dealing with Christians because Christians won't get in the book and find, a, find some help from God. You know that book will change your life? There's the power of the commandments. John uh, or, or Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing of sumner of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart do you know why everything we do is centered around the pe preaching and teaching the word of God do you know why all the tracts we pass out are saturated with the word of God because the word of God can do what we can't do it's powerful in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Amen. Luke 4.32, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Amen. Do you know the power of the commandments? Do you know how they impact people's lives? Do you know why there has been an attack since 1967 for the world to do away with the old King James Bible and accept every new version that's come along since? Because God only wrote one book and it's powerful. The rest of them are fairy tales and they don't help anybody. Oh, they say they do, but there's no sustaining or lasting help because they have no power behind them. Do you know the power of the commandments? Have you seen grown men shudder and shake under conviction when all you do is tell them what God says? Have you seen people get so angry they spit and slobber because of what the Bible says? Do you know? Do you know the person of Christ? Do you know the purpose of Christianity? Do you know the power of His commandments? Let me say this lastly. Do you know the promise of His coming? John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And here it is. And if I go, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. And Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm coming back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said, or Jesus said, in dealing with prophecy there in Matthew 24, they had asked him, said, well, give us a sign of your coming, because the Jews sought for a sign. 
He said this in verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All they was concerned about was their life. It repented God that he made man, because their every thought, every imagination was evil continually. It sounds like our day. They weren't thinking about God coming. They weren't thinking back in that day about the flood coming, even though Noah had warned them for 120 years. And then the flood came. It's too late. Do you know the promise of his coming? James 5, 8 says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. My dear friends, you don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to be a, a prophecy buff. You don't have to understand everything that the Bible says about prophecy, and you won't anyway. Half of it's not been told. All you got to do is look around. Yep. Come on. That's right. The Lord's coming. Yes. Yes. I've said this repeatedly. I'm going to say it again. You get mad, and you'll get glad when Jesus comes. This COVID thing is no worse than any other flu we have every election year. But this COVID thing's been a tool setting up and getting ready for the Antichrist. Because they are using this to control people. Laura Ingraham this week had a segment on masks. The CDC the one that Fauci is, works for, said they're ineffective. The World Health Organization that we quit funding because uh, China had them in their pocket and they was lying about this virus in the first place. They say, as of June 15th, that masks are ineffective. There's an outfit out of Europe that says masks are ineffective. Fauci himself said masks are ineffective and he threw out the first pitch at the Yankees and Washington Nationals game the other night then he went and sat in the stands he was not socially distant he had people on each side of him and he had his mask around his Adam's apple they want to tell you how to live but they don't live that way they're ineffective Miss Nett read me something uh, that she saw the other night from a federal site that was basically saying that even though they require masks, no major corporation is going to enforce it. They have told their employees not to argue with people, not to get in a skirmish over this. If people don't want to wear them, let them walk around without them. But on every door, masks are required. Why? because they're controlling. Look at how many of the masses have bowed down to it. The next thing's coming is a vaccine. Go ahead and take it. I'm not. No telling what's in that thing. I guarantee you one thing, it won't affect every strain of COVID. We've already had 19. That's why it's COVID-19. There's been 18 other ones. Come December, there'll be COVID-20. And whatever vaccine they come up with to trace you and keep your DNA on file will not tackle the next strain. Yeah. Just like the last year's flu vaccine won't affect this year's flu vaccine. It's all about controlling people. And when people think their safety or their pocketbook's in danger, they'll bow down and do anything. The civil disobedience that is going on in our country and nobody's standing up and, and stopping it, and I'm getting mad at the president for sending in uh, uh, troops to stop it, you understand in Portland they're burning down that city. Who do you think is going to rebuild it? Yeah. Our tax dollars. Right. You ought to have a vested interest in it. Sure. In Chicago, do you realize there have been more people killed in Chicago in the last four months than COVID has done around the world? Yeah. They don't tell you all that. Oh, they'll tell you how many's got it. They don't tell you the death rates are going down and they don't tell you how many's recovered from it. Right. Because they want to control you. They give you partial facts in order to control you and put you in fear. And that's exactly how the Antichrist is going to take over. He's going to come in and have all the answers and everybody's going to flock to him. Yes. Look at how many people follow Fauci. Have you looked at his history? That sucker's been wrong on everything he's ever done. 
And more people have died because he had the cure or vaccine or the medication to help with AIDS and he sat on it and two million people died in Africa. And we bow down to him. Grouchy Fauci. And he wonders why everybody's upset at him. Because he's wrong. He's a liar. Yes. He's a hypocrite. Yes. Amen. Yes, he is. All I'm telling you is Jesus is coming. Amen. He gave this word to the church. He said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Look at how many churches are closed. Yeah. 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 Hmm. I told this down at Brother Greg's last Sunday. If the power of God shows up, do you think COVID can hang around? If the devil's got to flee, do you think any disease is going to hang around? I just choose to live by faith, not by fear. But he's coming, friend. Do you know that? Do you see what's going on in this world? Do you understand all? How many of you were alive when Nixon was the president? Three of us. The Watergate scandal, he got caught cheating. He should have been impeached and cast out of office, which he resigned before they did that. But you realize that the people that worked for him on his cabinet that covered all that up, they went to jail? Yep. Do you realize all that has went on that has been proven many times over on, over all the people that lied about Trump and Russiagate and all that stuff? They got hardcore evidence where they have lied under oath, where they have done very crooked things and not a one of them has been indicted? Do you realize they had enough to throw Hillary Clinton in jail five years before she ran for president? Yep, they did. Do you know why Trump says we need to drain the swamp and all that crowds and nothing's ever happened to them? Do you ever wonder about that? You lie under oath and see what happens to you. Yeah. They'll bury you so far down in the, in the jail over there, you won't even be allowed to come to our jail services. You'd be in a mess. Yeah. Well, how come they get away with it? Because they're all part of the Illuminati. They're part of the crowd that runs this thing. Yeah. Hmm. Now, I know you all don't believe any of this stuff because you don't read. You're just like sheep following whoever sounds the best. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Amen. This thing's about ready. I told you all three years ago when they, when they actually bring it out that there's no gold in Fort Knox, our economy is shot. It's about shot right now. Now, I know the stock market's up about 26000 Do you know all that's inflated? There's nothing really behind it. I'm just telling you, Jesus is coming. The average grocery store has enough food on their shelves to sustain their area for three days. What do you think people's going to do when they can't get food on the fourth day? They're going to do whatever the Antichrist tells them. And I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. Do you know that? Now let me say all this. I'm done. Look again at verse number 8. I just ask you, do you know four simple things? Do you know the person of Christ? Do you know him as Savior? Do you know his voice? Do you know his touch? Do you know the purpose of Christianity? Do you know the power of the commandments? Do you know the promise of his coming? Now look at verse 8. If thou know not... O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth by, thy, by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids besides the shepherd's tents. Those who really don't know, they're satisfied in congregating rather than communing. There's some of you, oh, you're saved, but you never witness. You never seek for the power of God. You never seek for His touch and His presence in your life. You just come to church as a form of fellowship to get away. And all you're doing is congregating. But you never commune with Him. You never get those kisses. You never get that ointment. You never get that drawing. You never get that because you don't know. All you're interested in, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, that's enough. I want to tell you, you are living far beneath your privileges as a Christian. Yeah. Amen. The greatest thing you can ever do is have a 
intimate relationship with the one who made you. It has changed your life. And it won't matter what Fox News, CNN, what the, somebody down the street said, because you're walking with him. Yeah. Reason so, so many of you are so tore up, because you don't know the power of his commandments. I don't know how many of you I've heard you say, well, I got a verse, I got victory, until the next revival, and you're all down again. Huh? What happened to your victory? You're too busy hanging out with the flocks instead of hanging out with him. You know not. Hmm? And some of you are here today and you want to act like a Christian, but you don't know him. You want to talk like a Christian, but you don't know him. You want the benefits of Christianity. You want to go to heaven when you die, but you don't know him. Today would be a good day for everybody to make sure you know him. Why would you want to hang out with a bunch of dirty sheep when you can hang out with the shepherd? I just want to hang out with him. Do you know? Life's too short to hang out with sheep. I want to hang out with the one that's coming back for me. Do you know him? Let's all stand, Brother Ray. Come get a song of invitation. Some are already coming while they're getting a song. We're going to have a word of prayer. But if you're here today and you're not saved, during this invitation, you come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. If you're here today and you're saved and you've just been hanging out with sheep, any time you get, get next to the shepherd, is he drawing you? Why don't you come today and decide that today, from now on, I'm just going to hang out with the shepherd. Some are coming. Some are getting help. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. I'm thankful that we can know you in the free pardon of sins. And I'm glad it doesn't just end there. I'm glad we can grow deeper and deeper and get closer and closer and have a relationship with you that, Lord, will help us and propel us over any obstacle, any opposition, anything that we'll face in this life. We can have peace. We can have joy. We can have hope. We can have love. And, God, we can have all that in you. So many of your children are just living aimlessly in this world. They're not truly being a witness. They're not telling folks about Jesus. They're not, they don't understand the power of the scriptures that will help them, and they certainly aren't ready for your coming. God, I pray today they make up their mind. They're going all in. And then, God, I pray, crowd this size. Lord, I know in my heart there's some here not ready to meet you. Lord, they're lost. They may be a lost church member. They may be a good moral person. They may come to church regularly. They may never come to church at all. Maybe may be the, uh, the town's worst center. I don't know, Lord. You know every heart. But I pray through cords of love you draw them. I pray you'd create an appetite and a desire in their heart right now to know you as their Lord and Savior. And God, move now in this invitation. Bind the powers of hell. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.